Hello, welcome to video number two in this series for trigonometry. In the previous video, I did um, focus on the six basic trigonometric um, functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. In this video, we're gonna go one step further because we wanna know if there's any special relationship between any of those trig ratios depending on the type of angles that you're dealing with. So, this second topic is gonna to be on the complementary angles identity. Now, let's start first by understanding what complementary angles are. By definition, which whether you did trigonometry at any time or not, uh, complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. So, um, before, whenever you build a wall, the wall is supposed to make 90 degrees with the floor. But if you didn't build well, um, well, the builders are gonna come or the inspectors are gonna say, um, your wall is not straight, you need to adjust the angle so it's 90 degrees. So that angle you make, the adjustment you make is a complement that makes your building straight. Okay, so that's the whole idea of complementary angles. They, they're the adjustment. So what do you need to add to this angle so that you get 90 degrees because your wall is a little bit uh, bent. You need to move it up and make sure it's straight. Now, the right triangle has a special property. Remember, one of the angles is already 90 degrees. So, look at this. So, you have a right triangle, and this angle is already 90 degrees. So, remember that the total number of um, degrees, the total uh, number of, uh, the total, uh, the sum of the angles in a right triangle is always 180 degrees. So if you've taken 90 degrees out of 180, the remaining must add up to 90 degrees. And that's why the two angles in any right triangle will always be complementary. They will always have this property. Okay? And remember, sine, cosine, or tangent, everything is drawn from the right triangle. So if this angle is theta, and this angle is alpha, you, we always know that since theta and alpha are complementary, okay? And what does that mean? It means that theta plus alpha will always be 90 degrees. Every time you have this kind of relationship, you always have them add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so what is the identity we're trying to figure out here? Let's see. So firstly, we just defined this term, complementary angles, angles that add up to 90 degrees, and that's what you always get when you deal with the right triangle, because this is already 90, so these two must add up to 90 degrees, so the total can be 180 degrees, which we already know is the property of triangles. Now, what is the identity? Let's go back and recall what we did in the last video. What is the sine of theta? The sine of theta, let's call this um, B, call this A, and call this side C, okay? Um, it is opposite, the sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be A over C, so we can say this is equal to A over C. Now, let's leave this angle, let's go to the complement of that angle, the complementary angle, which is alpha. But this time, we're not gonna look for the sine, we're gonna look for the cosine. Okay, what is the cosine of the complementary angle? Well, the cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be A over C. So you notice that the sine of this angle will give you the same answer as the cosine of this angle. So this is equal to the cosine of alpha. Typically, on your calculator, the sine of something cannot be the same thing as the cosine of, of that same thing. Okay, usually sine and cosine will give you different answers, but the only time they will give you the same answer is if the angles in each case add up to 90 degrees. So for example, if this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees, you're gonna have the same answer because this and this will be complement at that point because alpha, theta and alpha will add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so what is the identity? Number one,
okay, if alpha and theta are complementary, then sine alpha equals cosine theta or sine theta equals cosine alpha. It doesn't matter which one you call theta or alpha. This is the first identity, number one, okay? You wanna make sure you register this one. That's the first identity. Sine and cosine are only equal when you perform the functions if the arguments add up to 90 degrees. So we can apply that to the very first question here. If sine x is equal to cosine 25, it simply means x and 25 are complementary angles. They complement each other to get to 90. So we can easily say for number question one, okay, question one, we have sine x equals cosine 25 degrees. This simply means that x plus 25 must give you 90 degrees. So x is equal to, what would you add to 25 to get 90? 65, okay? So that's our first answer. x equals 65, we're done. And the same thing applies to number two. You see, it is cosine being equal to sine. Well, that never happens unless this and this are complementary. That is, when you add them together, you'll get 90 degrees. So we're gonna apply that to number two also. So for number two, we're gonna say that x squared plus 10 added to this will give us 90 degrees. So we're gonna add this to this plus 2x, and that gives us 90 degrees. Well, we just need to make a quadratic equation out of this, solve it, and get our answer, okay? By the way, if you like this video, you're learning something, or at the end, you just, you just, you just love the video, or you just like this guy, make sure you like this video and you share it. Subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section. And there's a Patreon link that I've just provided if you want to support this channel in any way by donating a tiny amount. If you want to do that, please go ahead and do that. And let's get back to learning math. So this is going to be um, x squared plus 2x. If I bring this over here, I'm going to get negative 80 and that's zero. If I factor this quadratic, I'm gonna get x plus 10, x minus eight equals zero. Using the zero product property, it means this is zero or this is zero, or both of them are zero. But whatever happens, what makes this zero is when x is negative 10, so x equals negative 10. What makes this zero is when x is eight or eight. And those are the two possible values of x for which this equation will be true. Okay, we have used the first identity, which is that, um, this one, let me put a box around it. So remember that sine al alpha only equals cosine alpha under this condition, okay? Now, let's see what we can do here. Because this question is no longer dealing with sine or cosine, it's telling us about tangent and cotangent, but it's the same thing. Remember that the cotangent of an angle is the reciprocal of the tangent, okay? So let's go here. What do we think tangent of theta will be? Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is A over B. Now, what about the cotangent? Well, you see, when tangent is A over B, cotangent will be B over A. So, what is the cotangent? I mean, the reciprocal of the tangent. So, let's go here. What's the cotangent of alpha? It's going to be adjacent over opposite, not opposite over adjacent like tangent, because it's cotangent is the reciprocal function. So, this is going to be adjacent over opposite, which is still A over B. So, the tangent of theta which is a over b, will be equal to the cotangent of alpha because theta and alpha are in the same right triangle and they're complements of each other, just as we did in this case. So we can also establish a second identity, uh, which I'm going to write here and say that tan theta is equal to cotangent 
of alpha if and only if theta plus alpha will be equal to 90 degrees. It's important that this condition is met. Okay, they're complements of each other. And we can use that now to solve this question. Okay, so tangent will be equal to cotangent if this and this are complements. That is, they add up to 90 degrees. By the way, every question I've done here has been in degrees. Okay, in the next video I'm going to do, I'll show you how to convert degrees into radians because as calculus proceeds, we'll, uh, we will not, or progresses, we will no longer be doing degrees, we'll be doing most calculations in radians. Okay, not calculus. Pre-calculus or whatever trade thing you're learning, okay? Some degrees, but mostly radians. Okay, now, let's solve number three. So for number three, we said that tangent and cotangent will, um, will only be equal when these two are complements of each other. So I'm gonna add this to this and equate it to 90 degrees. So for number three question, I'm gonna say that x minus one plus 12 will be 90 degrees. And I know that minus one plus 12 is 11. So x plus 11 is 90. What would I add to 11 to get 90? That must be 79. Okay, so x equals 79 degrees, and that's the answer to the third one. Like it. Like the video. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.